Over here. Back here. Right, he won't follow, will you? All right, good. Now you are not going to believe what I've got here. Look. Stay back. Just look. Yeah. You know what that is? It's Crowley time. Crowley time! Hello, and welcome to Crowley time with me, Tom Crowley. With me, Tom Crowley. How do you deal with change? Do you grit your teeth, gird your loins, clench your rear cheeks and swan dive into unfamiliar waters? Or do you sit on the side of the pool of uncertainty, dipping a hesitant toe in briefly before retreating to the showers claiming that you saw one of the kids from the school group having a wee in the uncertainty earlier? However you feel about it, we must all go through change sometimes. Personally, I've been through 9,403 changes. Among those were changing schools when I was seven, learning to like coffee when I was 18, losing my honour by abandoning my master's fiefdom and choosing the wandering life of the Ronin when I was 25, Brexit, quitting smoking, and realising those gold hoop earrings really weren't doing me any favours. Which were some of your most notable changes over the years? How do you feel about them now? Would you change them back if you could? Or, in the final analysis, was it worth making the change after all? And most importantly, do you have change for a fiver? Of course, this being a sketch show, change is my business. Changes from minute to minute, scene to scene, accent to accent. Sometimes quite a few changes within the same accent. <clears throat> so I encourage you to embrace change. Get comfortable with it. And quickly because we're about to slide into the wee contaminated uncertainty of another episode of this modular comedy banquet, and the changes are going to come thick and fast, often without warning. In fact, here comes one now. Oi! Oi! Yo, mate! Uh, excuse me! Uh, yes, sorry? Uh, excuse me massively, mate! Yes, sorry, sorry, can I help? Did you just kick my personal propulsion system, my dude? Your what? My personal propulsion system, mate! My forward momentum device! Did you just kick it? Oh, you mean that electric scooter thing? <laughs> <laughs> sure, if you're a rock and roller from cave people times, <laughs> this is my personal motivation matrix, and your careless foot lump just gave it a bashing good, sir. So what do you say? Well, I, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for kicking your scooter. Yeah, gosh darn right, actually, Hermano. You don't just kick another man's pedial enhancement machine and then saunter off like Will-o'-the-Wisp, my guy. Look, I said I'm sorry, and to be honest, you're standing with it open, not even folded up, right across the middle of the platform. Someone's gonna knock into it. It's lucky I didn't trip up. Lucky, mate. The only lucky thing is that you are lucky that I don't take my personal acceleration engine and ride it right up your bracket, matey boy. Nobody disrespects the personal person propeller. All right, mate. Calm down. Me? Calm down. Me? Calm down. Calm down. Me? Yes. No way, chummy me lad. I don't have time to calm down because I'm going places and I'm getting there fast thanks to my personal movement contrivance here. <laughs> yes, well, good luck with that. Mate, 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 one question before you sling your fat hook. What? What's your MPH? My... Your MPH, your average rate. How fast do you walk? Oh, uh, about two miles an hour, same as everyone else. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> this baby goes average 3.5 MPH. Well, that's not a lot faster. Yes, but it adds up, mate. It adds up. It adds up over time and distance, mate. If you need to get somewhere, and it takes you 15 minutes to walk there, dragging your caveman leg posts, I'm going to get there in 10 minutes or so on my personal progression assembly over here. <coughs> and if you need to get somewhere, and it'll take you an hour to walk there on your Neanderthal meat stilts, guess what? Ha <laughs> ha! I'll be there in about 40 minutes instead. And I'll be standing in the doorway waiting for you for 20 minutes while everyone congratulates me on my beautiful shiny personal movement enabler. 
I'm going to go now. Go ahead, mate! Go ahead, like a prehistoric slug on your flesh crutches. And I hope you've learned a valuable lesson about disrespecting another man's personal thrust vehicle. Why do you even have that thing on the tube? You're already getting on a form of transport. Oh my god, mate! Are you stupid? Are you actually stupid? Are you a stupid person? Oi, look. When you get off the stupid train with your stupid legs, dragging your leaden bones all the way from the station to your chosen destination, don't you think I'm going to be blasting a trail right past your stupid sack body on my personal power pedal, getting to wherever you choose roughly 1.5 times as quick as you? Well, it takes up an awful lot of space. Yeah, space that I deserve, mate. Space that's owed to me, because I've joined the elite ranks of the personally power propelled, instead of languishing in the primordial ooze using legs made of gristle and giblets like you. People bow down to me, mate. People kiss my ring. People grab the hem of my cords when I pass. Because compared to their pathetic, trudging existence, mine is the drift of a gliding god. Sorry, sorry. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Shoot, sweetheart. Are you the biggest twat in the universe? <laughs> yes, mate. Yes, I am. Oh. Uh... I'm the biggest twat ever. Best in the world at it, mate. And it's cool. It's cool to be a twat now. Don't you know anything? It's, it's all over TikTok, babe. It's all over the gram. Being a twat is the best. It's super cool. It's called Twatcore. Hashtag Twatcore, darling. Look it up and you'll see I'm the best one there is. I'm the biggest twat in the world. Millions of twat followers. An endorsement deal with Huel. You wish you could be as big of a twat as me, mate, but it's never going to happen. You'll never make it. You're in the absolute skids compared to me. Now stand aside and make way for my personal egress vessel. Long Lol, 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 lol. Oh, God, what an absolute... I should punch that guy right in his stupid, obnoxious face. But I'll never catch up with him. Out of the way, baby buggy. Oh. <laughs> Snooze you lose, mama. Twat core. He was a funny article, that fellow. Have you met him? On a tube platform or at a bus stop or on a narrow pavement by a busy road? I think you have. But oh look, it's time for another change. We take you now to a rest home in the year 2075. You all right there, Mr. Roberts? Well, that pillow looks a bit sad. Let me fluff that up for you. Uh, there we are. The pillow is good again. Ah, uh, woo, brackets, wolf howl. Ha <laughs> ha yes, that's right. You all right, Miss Bitchface 01? You asking me if I'm all right, and I'm here for it. Yes. Well, just let me know if you need anything. That waters my crops. Good. Good. I feel seen. It me. Hello, this is Crowley time with me, Tom Crowley with me, Tom Crowley. We can't take your call at the moment. Please leave your message after the tone. The most profound change I ever went through was when I realised that Michael Bublé was rubbish. It was like being hit by a bolt from the blue, like some sort of divine intervention. I, I just suddenly thought, what the hell is this crap? Hey, Greg. Hi, Caitlin. Good to e-see you. <laughs> we should get together to talk about that new design concept. Sounds good. Let me check my calendar. Wait a second. Where's the calendar function? Uh, I don't think it has a calendar. That really seems like something it should have. Yeah. Fuck you. Hi, I'm Mike Shinbone from Shinbone Entrepreneurials. I recently found out that I'm the last surviving member of a historic bloodline of great significance. Then I found out that this didn't involve me inheriting any money or assets. So I'm here to introduce Shinbone Entrepreneurials' new business venture. But it's not just any ordinary business venture like a speaker store or a new type of borderline legal muscle relaxant for the kinky sex community. No, this is all kinds of business ventures in one. In fact, it's a whole new dimension, or something like that. Say hello to the Micaverse. Wow, Greg, that's quite the choice of digital avatar. Yeah, look, I'm a clown. <laughs> Far out. It was one of the two choices available. I know. You chose the other one. Yep. Idi Amin. Yes. 
In these unprecedented times now more than ever, nobody wants to go to work. And not just in the usual sense, when people just like you would prefer to sit around in their underwear all day trying to jerk it to the shopping channel with middling success instead of going out and earning a living for once in their sorry ass lives. No, these days even people with a job don't want to go into the office because they know that there'll be at least one ignorant Neanderthal asshole there who refuses to show even the merest consideration by wearing a mask in their day to day lives. In fact, you saw Samantha from marketing with your very own eyes, screaming about her freedoms into the face of a 16-year-old usher at the movie theater, peppering the poor girl's pimply little face and eyes and hair with corona spittle. As if it wasn't enough that you have to spend every motherfucking day of your life with these insufferable sea bags, now any one of them could consign you to an early grave, or, at the less severe end of the spectrum, lifelong fatigue problems. So, what is the productivity-conscious young professional to do now? Well, perhaps instead of going to a real office with real pricks all around you, you could strap on a cumbersome helmet that makes you look like an extra from the porno ripoff of Johnny Mnemonic, which I assume would be called something like Johnny Bag Neil Moan Dick, and go to a virtual 3D rendered office with digital simulation pricks who look like either a clown or Edie Armin all around you instead. We're working on some more. We should have a, a dragon guy and uh, Agent 47 by the end of next month. Not the month coming, the m- month uh, after that. That's odd. What is it, Caitlin? Well, I'm trying to make notes in the Notes app, but it keeps autocorrecting everything to swear words. Really? Yeah, see, I wanted to write, try to duck postal expenses by asking for email correspondence exclusively, and... Hmm, try to fuck postal expenses by asshole quim shit for brains jizz gibbon attack. I don't think I can send this to the regional manager. I can explain that, Mr. Armin. It's Caitlin. You see, I like to be frank and straightforward in my dealings with people, so I get just the teensiest bit apoplectic when my ducking phone or my shippy computer decides to censor my speech patterns for me. That's why in the microverse, it's harder not to swear, because I don't think it's up to some pastel-colored turmeric latte fuckhole to decide how the shit I should assholing express my fuck self. It's probably because of fucking Disney or something. Disney bought everything, and now God forbid you ever hear the word cunt or see a pubic hair in a movie. Jesus Christ, why the fuck would you pay to go to the pictures if Batman doesn't get a visible heart on at some point? Fucking Disney, man. I tell you, one of these days, some high-paid lawyer wearing a pair of Mickey Mouse ears is going to come into your bedroom in the dead of night and say, as of this afternoon, we have obtained the rights to your home and your life and all subsidiary concerns, and we regret that we cannot permit Disney property to be affiliated with obscene content, then get two seven-foot-tall quarterbacks dressed as Goofy to forcibly remove you from your spouse. I thought this was a networking program. Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up, Greg! Shut the fuck up, Greg. Okay. Sorry, Mike. Shut the fuck up, Greg. So that's the Microverse from Shinbone Entrepreneurials. Sign up today and become a virtual guy so you can have meetings without having to smell Greg's fungal infection. Oh, Mike, that's not cool. You said you wouldn't tell anybody. Greg, I told you to shut up! Ow, what the hell? My helmet just zapped me. Yeah, how about that? Guess you should have read the end user agreement more carefully. Ow, Mike, cut it out! Stop it, Mike. Leave him alone. Oh, you want some of this too, Edie? Ow, Mike! Fucking Disney prudes! Digital offices. What will those Silicon Valley wags think of next? Something really mad like a yogurt bike. Probably. We now return you to a rest home in the year 2075. OMG. Tune. This. Normalize green jelly with lunch. Green jelly is life. I feel like we're just not talking about green jelly and it's like WTF. Green jelly is the best jelly. Sorry, not sorry. Red jelly, SMDH. Red jelly is green jelly erasure. This. Well... I grew up in Dusty Wedge, Arizona, and spoke like all the locals for most of my life. Until I thought, you know what? I fancy a change. And that's when I decided to adopt this flawless English accent by Lamy Governor. Golly. Well done, caller. That was just like... 
Listening to a mirror. Oh, and now, listeners, I should offer a quick warning. The following segment contains raw, unedited footage of a real-life police intervention, and listeners who are offended by strong language should stop listening now. Cow fucker, you like it? You wank off your tonsils. You. You can go and jizz up the ceiling for all I think. You knob complex. Go, go and kiss a wall, shit lips. All right, sir. All right, just stay, stay where you are. All right. All right. Don't you tell me what to do, you fucking twat hole. Piss features. So it's uh, fairly obvious what we've got here. I'd like to see you eat a great big turd with the queen. White male. 40s or crusty twat balls. Maybe 50s in a public park. Your moustache looks like a wispy goat's fanny. Dressed in a, a business suit, quite dishevelled now. My anus fun buns, honestly. We're looking at a professional man who's overdone it a bit. Fucking truncheon lunch. Maybe his wife's left him, or maybe he wishes she would. Call, call your mum. Call your mum. Tell her I think she can't drive. Or maybe he's just had a few too many. At a boozy office lunch. Office? Oh, oh, fuck the office. Yeah, fuck it right up the tailpipe, you fucking shite factory. All right, look, remain calm, sir, okay? Thank you. I'll calm you. I'll calm you right up your piss hole, pig tits. Technicolored swap shop penis. Tower block toss party. He's evidently just a, a bit excited. There's no need to use force you or... Don't take him down the you station. You know what a kind of lingus is. Quite often we find it's just best to let these lads wear themselves out. Squid ring, greasy squid ring. I'm just keeping watch to make sure the situation uh, isn't escalated in any way. Who's your dad? Who's your, go on, who is he then? Who's your dad? I can, I can jump over a horse. I bet you can't, pissy legs. This disturbance was first reported at 2.13pm uh, and it's now... Uh, 428. You're, you're substandard. Yeah. So this one's yeah. got quite a bit more stamina than most. What's unusual is that he hasn't had any more to drink since You've I've been here. But You've got fucking piercings, mate. I've seen them. He doesn't seem to have sobered up at all. So this could be a long one. I'll take I'll take you over to China, Noodle Knob. Then we'll see who's the fit man. Where's my keys? You probably took them, didn't you? You mad bollock. Yeah, well, pull off my nips as well, why not? You're best friends with a coward. There's battery acid in your mind. You fucking... You fucking... Uh... Shocking. That really is absolutely shocking. That sort of behaviour makes me want to chuck up all the pudding I've ever eaten. Every last morsel. All over myself. We now take you back again to a rest home in the year 2075. All right, you two. Time for your 11 o'clock tablets. 12 pills for heart rate control and kidney function. Number four will blow your mind. Here's some more water. And here you are, Mr Roberts. Here's how my medication stops my colon from spasming and my stomach from eating itself. Thread. Not just now, Mr. Roberts. I've got to give Mr. Ogasole his tablets as well. <sighs> Karen. What was that, Mr. Roberts? Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Roberts. Lol. Ratioed. Okay, Boomer. <clears throat> TFW, the medication is on point. This. OMG, this. Hashtag, this. <coughs> Tell me you pulled yourself without telling me you pulled yourself. Don't poo shame me. You can feel it, can't you? That's the future we're all rocketing towards, isn't it? That is, if the Earth doesn't become an uninhabitable ball of fire in the next 20 years. 
But speaking of the future and rockets, here's a treat. I've had a communication from an old friend down the time tubes for the first time in quite a while. Let's listen to it together, shall we? These are the diaries of Link Tangent, space cartographer. Vacuum sealed for freshness and best enjoyed with an avocado-based dip. Link's log, space year four, space month, ah. Uh... The time has finally come. After over a year of probationary desk work in the Galactic Central Command Archives... See Crowley Time, Episode 14, True Believers! I have finally been allowed to reapply for active space duty, the flying around and writing things down kind. At this very second, I'm sitting outside the conference chamber awaiting my moment. Shortly, I will be called in to plead my case before the big cheese of the GCC Cartographic Department. Or, more accurately, the Senior Cartographic Cheese Second Class. She's one of the most powerful people in the organization, answerable only to the departmental head cheese. <clears throat> As these hearings are a matter of public record, I am permitted to record the proceedings from my log. Oh, I hear them calling my name. Wish me luck, little dribbles. Mama. Cartographer Tangent, it is important that you realize that this review does not mean, by any stretch of the Galactic Central Command's administrative procedures, that we like you. Understood, Madam Cheese. Please, call me Lindsay. Okay. Mr. Tangent, we, and I just mean me, I'm using the cheese we here, we have had to review your case very carefully. I would expect nothing less. In the 19th month of Space Year 3, you did return your craft to the GCC mothership having both been exposed to a dangerous toxic substance and birthed a non-regulation child. Quiet, little dribbles. <clears throat> yes, your cheeseness, that is correct. Pardon me, Lindsay. While it has been proven that your impregnation originated on this very ship, an operative of the cartographic department should know better than to expose themselves to toxic space goo while on a foreign world. But, Lindsay, as I said in my statement, I was on space annual leave at the time. Do not interrupt the cheese! Your Lindsay privileges are hereby rescinded. <sighs> Understood, your cheeseness. As you so impudently reminded me, you were not on active duty at the time of the exposure, and you turned yourself over to the quarantine team on return to the mothership. You also kept your screaming to a minimum while in the isolation chamber, and wanking. These merits have all been noted. Thank you, your cheeseness. It's hard to knock one out when there's a lizard with your own face watching you from across a small white room. But not impossible. Stenographer, read that back to me. It's hard to knock one out when there's a lizard with your own face watching you from across a small white room, but not impossible. Thanks. Just testing. However, Tangent, we must take your entire record into account. These have not been your only deviations from GCC protocol. For example, there was that time you failed to declare an entire case of chocolate-infused peanut butter body cream to the Mothership's customs officer on return from your voyage to Confecticon 9. This I admit. Despite drawing Secretary Boktangaroth for Secret Santa four space years ago, you did not, in fact, buy him a present. That one was my bad. Especially offensive considering that you had all that illicit peanut butter body cream lying around. Uh, forgive me, Madam Cheese, but I had already finished it. In a week? Good God, man. What can I say? I'm a peanut butter guy. Evidently. Uh, you failed to report for poo-poo duty at the dog park at Station Command 37900. Yes, I, I apologize for that. Lastly, it has been noted that you failed to RSVP to Commander Zing Tong Du's stag party. That is true, but I had put down my deposit for the hotel room, so it was me that lost out in that instance, your cheeseness. You sure did. I took your place and we tore the asshole out of that whole weekend. Goodness. It was good. In any case, we have weighed the balance of your sins and your successes, your mediocre ability as a cartographer and our devastating staff shortages, your smell and your mighty gentleman's blubber. So in communication with my fellow departmental cheeses and the arch mother mind, the decision has been reached to return you to active cartographic duty with immediate effect. <laughs> <laughs> 
hot thrusters. On one condition. That you surrender your lizard man offspring to our lab boys for invasive testing and general torture at once. Mama! You... you mean give up little dribbles? What on earth could you hope to learn from him? Oh, I don't know. See if scalpels cut him. Oh. I'm pretty sure they do. You know, how sharp the scalpels might need to be. Do we need another tool? Maybe a screwdriver? Why would you... Um, okay. A wrench. I don't know how strong he is. I haven't wrench. held him um, before. A wrench. Maybe to see if we need to get inside that thing. I don't know. Maybe a spirit level would help. Spirit level? You're cheesing. See if I he don't... likes to wear clothes. I've got a fabulous little doll's outfit I'd like to put him in. He does like to wear little clothes. Maybe feed him some high, high-grade high poison. See if that burns his insides. Um, Let's see what merit that experiment would have. I'm al- also interested in seeing if um, I can teach him Spanish. Well, your cheeseness, I'm sorry. I I can't give up my own child. Even a very scaly child with two forked tongues. The only way I'll return to active cartographic duty is with my space sextant at my hip and little dribbles at my side. Well, okay then. Huh? Sorry, what? Really? Yeah, I was just chancing my arm, really, ever since I clapped eyes on that little freak. I've wanted to stick some electrodes on it and see what happens, but what the heck... From one peanut butter guy to another. You're reinstated. Hyperdrive! Thank you, your cheeseness. No, Link. Call me Lindsay. And if you find any more discount chocolate-infused peanut butter body cream, you can call me later. Gosh. Don't write that last part down, stenographer. You got it, Lindsay. Not you. You can't call me Lindsay. I'm sorry. You still have to call me Queen Wiggle Waggle. Yes, Queen Wiggle Waggle. Excellent. Can I go? Yes, cartographer tangent, go. Go and map the spaceways once more. Can do. And I... I'll see you around, I I guess. Yes, you will. Oh. Like, I guess I'll see you at lunch for one one thing. You will see me at lunch. Oh, good. Uh, Well, I'll see you you then. I'll see you at the table. In the officer's quarters. Top table. Well, that's quite a... Yeah. Oh. Uh, You'll be sitting next to me. Oh, Great. Uh, Make sure you bring your little butt. It is now some hours later. I was in the GCC canteen celebrating my reinstatement with some of the team from the cartographic department for several hours and have got absolutely nebulated on Arcturan tequila suppositories. <laughs> the bubbles, the bubbles are nice. They go blue, 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 blue. Tomorrow, I ship out once more on my beloved craft, CDA-387, or as I like to call her, Space Car. Oh, Space Car, flying through the eternal nighttime. But before that, <clears throat> my main concern is getting through the night. For getting me back my sextant, I owe Cheese Lindsay a huge debt. Only, I'm afraid she might want to call it in sooner than expected. One of the guys in the canteen said he saw her roaming the corridors with a bottle of olive oil, a chef's hat, a comically oversized whisk, and a mischievous glint in her eye. And I've had far too much tequila up my ass tonight to deal with that whole situation. So, here I am. Hiding inside a space suit in a maintenance locker in the main hangar. I can see my beloved space car right now through the little slits in the locker door. I can practically taste the astro dust already. Although that could be because little dribbles farted in the suit a few minutes ago. <laughs> oh, little dribbles. Well, I can feel sleep's velvet gloved fingers tugging on my eyelids. So I guess this is where I'll be spending my last night on the mothership. Tonight, dangling from a hook in a smelly maintenance space onesie. Tomorrow, back to the spaceways and adventure and stars and trying weird space delicacies at asteroidal truck stops and throwing up in the space bathrooms of asteroidal truck stops. Oh... The musty smell of an out-of-date space truck stop, space bathroom, space air freshener. How I've missed it. This is Link Tangent, space cartographer once more. Signing... 
signing off. Uh, uh, oh, oh, no, not there. I don't like change. In fact, I've never ever changed. Not once. I live as a giant adult fetus floating in artificial amniotic fluid, receiving all my oxygen and nutrients through a tube that's hooked up to my mouth like I'm in the Matrix or something. In fact, I've only ever changed once, and that was to leave my artificial womb to make this telephone call. You hear that, Tom Crowley? You've ruined my life. And if I didn't have absolutely zero muscle mass from floating in jelly for 40 years, I'd find out where you live, and I'd come round and beat you up. Now, manservant, put down this telephonic device and sluice me back into my big jelly tank. Swiftly, man! Swiftly! All change, please. Did this episode change you? Are you the same person you were before it began? Are you? How could you know? How could you possibly know? No, you are. Sorry, I'm just messing around. But anyway, hopefully this program has changed you in little ways. Put a little spring in your step. Put a little whistle on your lips. Put some very different ideas about peanut butter in your brain. I've certainly been changed into someone who's as happy as a sea urchin, thanks to this episode's special guest, Lucy Farrett. Thanks for having me, Tom. Lucy was kind enough to lend her considerable vocal talents to several of this episode's sketches, and I'm absolutely honoured to have her on the show. And it was a lot of fun too, wasn't it, Lucy? Making hollandaise sauce can be tough, but I find the key is to just keep whisking as long as possible. Great. You can find out more about Lucy at her website, lucyfarrett.com. That's Farrett with two R's and two T's, or at her Twitter, at Lucy Farrett. Lucy is an astonishingly brilliant comedy writer and performer, and whatever she gets up to, it's bound to be <laughs> good. If you want more Lucy right this second then maybe this is the time for you to become a supporter of this show on Patreon. This month's supporter-exclusive bonus material is almost a full hour of me and Lucy chatting about comedy and how it's made, and to sign up and claim your reward, you need only go to patreon.com forward slash Crowley time and support this show to the tune of $2 per episode, or your local currency equivalent. Why? $2 per episode? That's practically pocket. Change. Change. You see... But a different kind of of change. It might be too long since I mentioned change, which was the theme of this episode, for that for that to work. Never mind, that's the end. The next episode will be released when someone breaks a mirror and actually wins seven years of good luck. So make sure to subscribe, so you'll be alerted at the precise moment that happens. Everything you've just heard was made by me, Tom Crowley, and featured special guest performer Lucy Farrett. Please submit all praise, questions or complaints to at a Tom Crowley on Twitter. To help me fatten up my Christmas goose, go to patreon.com forward slash Crowley time and become a supporter today. Or go to CrowleyTime.com and buy a copy of Discount Bin, this show's first soundtrack album. And remember, when I was going to St. Ives, I met a man with seven wives. I immediately reported him to the local constabulary as a bigamist, and they are still chasing that randy man around the beaches and harbours of St. Ives to this very day. Where's your auntie, eh? Where's your auntie? I know where she is. She's making matchsticks for money. And your uncle as well, and he takes it in the ear every day. Yeah, he'd cut you open, all the rings would just say wank. You've got a fat head, and your arms are too short. You're invited to a fuck party, and I'm going. You've, you've got the power of arse. As you can see. He's everyone in around still here. Still going strong. All of you love Andrew Neil. Yeah, yeah, you do. It's now 8:56 p.m. Oh, and I've missed me dinner. You forget a cat's birthday. You would Great. actually. You would. You're so insensitive. we've been here, Dick, for over six and a half hours. Oh yeah, it's all for the crows, isn't it? It's all right. It's all just for the crows <sighs> with you. 
stick one of your fat balls in your garden and let the finches have a peck at it. You're like a play school guy, what's behind... <laughs> what we had there was a disturbance to local residents. Clearly uh, unacceptable language which could have led to someone taking offence. Possibly a violent situation developing. In addition to the aforementioned hunger situation affecting an officer of the law which, if not addressed, could have affected said officer's judgment, possibly uh, endangering nearby civilians. So, without backup and in the interests of preventing any further disturbance, I took proactive action to prevent further developments of the situation. It'll be alright, it'll, it'll probably just wake up in a couple of hours and go somewhere else. All right.